Okay, if we got, I've got down here in my notes, I've got the polar diameter of the Earth, 7,899.988 miles. So, you know, it's fair enough. I rounded it off to 7,900. 7, Equatorial diameter, 7,926.677259 miles. The mean diameter, the mean diameter, 7,917 miles. Uh, so there we go, right there, the mean diameter, right, times pi gives you the 24,872.72, which we could then assume would be a mean circumference. You divide that by 43,200, and now you have the inner island, which was the dwelling place of the gods, right? <laughs> wow. Yeah, it was. Man, there's, yep. I mean that's the same scale that the uh, that the, the Great Pyramids modeling forty three thousand two hundred. Yeah. Yes. And so, what's significant about that number? Well, we find it all over, but how do we find it? How would we find that number in everyday use? Okay, think about think about the diurnal cycle. What is the diurnal cycle? The day and night cycle. Yeah, the day and night. Okay, so. How many hours in the diurnal cycle? 24. 24, based upon transits of the solar disk across the local meridian. So in other words, if we set up that plumb bob and we're looking due south, right? And we're sighting against the, the, the plumb line, which could now define our local meridian, right? So now throughout, through the course of the cycle, we picture the image of the sun as being a disk with a dot a, a hypothetical geometrical point in the middle, when that point transits the local meridian, you count 24 hours. We, we've taken that unit, that, that solar cycle, which is based on the Earth's rotation, and we've divided that into 24. So the whole 24-hour cycle is totally based upon this rotational relationship between the Earth and the Sun. And you could pinpoint it to an infinitely small measure of time if you wanted to. You know, when, when is high noon? Well, is it one second before? Well, or is it a half second before? Or is it a second after? You see, we get into that Zeno's paradox thing there. But for in the real world, you have to define a, a, unit, of, a unit of practical measure, right? Mm -hmm. So in terms of our division of the day, we've gone two orders of minuteness. We've taken the hour, we've taken that a 24, a 1 24th segment of the diurnal cycle of the Earth's rotation, right? And we have divided that hour into 60 minute parts, right? The minutes, minute, got it, right? Now we've taken each of those minutes and we've subdivided them into a second order of minuteness, you see? Yep. So we've got hours, minutes, seconds, right? Okay, so now an hour is how many minutes? 60. Each second is 60. Each minute is 60 seconds. So there are 60 times 60 seconds in every hour, which you don't have to use your calculator for this. 60 times 60 would be 3,600, right? Mm -hmm. Now then, Okay. I Multiply see that by 24 and see what you get. <laughs> Kyle, are you ready? 23,200. 3,600 <laughs> 3, times 24, the number of seconds in a day. Oh, I got yeah. eight. Well, it's going to be double. Yeah, 86,400 86, 86, seconds what? in a day. Isn't that uh, interesting? It's in itself, right? It's an order of magnitude so, smaller but, than the diameter of the sun in miles also. It is, but it's double the number of, so it's 86,400. Yeah. So half of that or 12 hours yeah. would uh, be 43,200 seconds. So now the thing to do is to take it to the next order of magnitude, right? Which is the annual cycle. And there will be this starting point within the annual cycle. And, and we have 
his, historically, peoples all over the ancient world chose the, the vernal equinox as that, as that mark, right? The equinox, when day and night were of equal length. Now, we talk about the day of equinox, but it's not a day. In fact, how long is the actual equinox? A single it's point. Infinitely yeah. small. It's point. infinitely small, exactly. But again, for purposes of the, the real world and being able to um, organize our societies and so on, we've chosen to take that natural organic unit, divide it into 24. Each of those units have been subdivided into 60 parts, 60 minute parts, and those 60 minute parts have been further subdivided into 60 second orders of minuteness. And if we now take that moment, we'll say moment, and we could define it as say one or two seconds if we wanna actually give it some duration, rather than trying to take it down to infinitely small next to nothing, right? But we give it some duration, we might give say the second, what is the second of, of, of equinox? And I think if you, you, you went into the tables, you could find actually the time of equinox to the second, right? Mm -hmm. But once we get it to that level of precision, now you have 43,200 seconds of day of light and 43,200 seconds yeah. of dark. Yeah, okay. And, and that I is the moment, that is the moment, the equinoctial moment of cosmic balance in the traditional models of cosmology, see? So you've got this 43,200 subdivision of, of our, of our temple framework, our, our measure of time, see? And the fact that, that, that those same numbers are encoded both into space and time was uh, exemplified in the ancient structures, see? And even in the language, see, when you think about time, you, like, you think temporal, you think tempo, right? Mm -hmm. Well, when you're, when you're um, manifesting the, the principles of time in into space, into solidity, into 3D, you're building a temple. Right. <laughs> because the temple is, 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 is it, it, it's like the crystallization of time. And so the, it, the, the numbers that you find embedded in the temple are derivative from the cosmic cycles. And it always begins the closest to our first level of perception, the first thing that we see, which is basically the day-to-day -day cycle of the, uh, of the sun rising and setting. And then from there, we can go to the lunar cycle, and then we go to the annual cycle, and then we go to the next level, which was the great year cycle. See? That's fascinating. Yeah. Isn't it fascinating? Come up with this. <laughs> what genius. Well, see, there we go. So, so how is it when we begin to look at this stuff, like, what's the origin of this? Yeah. I mean, you know, if you, if you go, yeah, we, we can give certain Greeks uh, credit. Eratosthenes. Did Eratosthenes discover processional or, uh, or did uh, not Eratosthenes, but uh, Hipparchus, did he discover procession nah. or did he learn about it from, and then possibly test it, verify it, but did, was it completely a, a spontaneous discovery on his part or was it part of a tradition that he had access to? See, that's a legitimate question to ask. 